Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Vaccine Team Podcast. I'm Kara Sundlin, and this is where we answer the questions that you have about getting the vaccine, especially here in Connecticut, where things are changing all the time. Uh, We are coming to you as we've just learned that the mask mandate is going to be lifted in our state, and as just within the last 24 hours, it's now okay to vaccinate your kids ages 12 to 15 in Connecticut. So I am joined by Dr. Lucia Benzoni. She is a pediatrician with Hartford Healthcare uh, Medical Group Pediatrics, and she's out in Litchfield County. And we thank you for being with us. I know it's a busy time and you're probably getting a lot of calls from the parents that you serve. Yes, we do. We are getting a lot of vaccine calls. We are fielding a lot. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the biggest question people have, even if they've gotten vaccinated themselves, is, is this safe for my child. Yes, that is exactly it. I get that question all the time. In the This is a new vaccine. Um, and that is parents' fear that they are putting something into their child that may affect them 20 years down the line. And I can safely say, I think with the science that's behind the vaccine, that there really is no risk of that. Anything, because the vaccine actually disappears in your system when, um, when it makes the antibody. So it's a messenger RNA, the Pfizer one. It's a messenger RNA, it goes into the system. It tells your cells how to make the antibody and then it, it's gone. Okay, so uh, obviously you know a lot more science than the basic, uh, than the average mom and dad out there. But basically that is, I mean, as a concern, even myself, I'm double vaccinated, I've had COVID. Um, I feel like I, I probably got lots of antibodies at this point. I recovered from COVID and I've had my two shots. But when you talk about giving it to your children, I have a 14 year old and 11 year old, you go, uh oh, I got it. I want to do some more research. Yes, it's your right. job to protect your child. It's your job to make sure that everything that you cause your child to go through or to undergo is a safe thing for your child to, to have happen to them. Right. So, yeah. And, as parents. And, and so as you say, the science, I think the biggest question parents have is how do we have all the science? Cause it hasn't been out that long. No, we don't. That's correct. We don't have all of the data on this particular vaccine, but we have the data on this science. The science has been around for a very, very long time. It's not, it works differently than other vaccines where you introduce into the system, like a partial a part of a virus and then the body recognizes that partial part and makes an antibody against it. This vaccine does not work like this. This vaccine actually disappears after it does its job and it tells the, then you have the antibody in your system and you have the antigen is being presented to your antibody producing cells, your, your, basically your lymph nodes and your, your B cells um, and then it's gone. So it's not something that hangs around in your system. So are you advocating to your patients that they should get the vaccine for their children and why? So absolutely, definitely over 16. The people from 12 to 16, what I tell them is that we are starting it. It appears to be very, very safe. Um, And what is the difference between a 12 and a 16 year old's immune system? Really, there is not a lot of difference between a 12 and 16 year old immune system. So therefore, by extrapolation, it's safe for a 12 year old. And why, do, let's go back to the 16 year olds. We, you're so confident about the 16 year olds, not that you're not confident about the 12, but you're like, absolutely, of course, uh, for your 16 and up, why, are, why do you feel that way? Well, they've vaccinated now, you know, hundreds of thousands of children and they haven't had any side effects. And I have a child that's that age who got vaccinated and he had a sore arm for a day, but he was out playing basketball that same day. <laughs> Yeah. You know, for those of us who had some reactions to the vaccine as adults, uh, I had a pretty strong reaction to the Moderna vaccine. Do we expect that for our kids? The children are not having that same strong reaction. And I don't know if it's because it's Pfizer, because I got Moderna and I also had a fairly strong reaction. Um, Actually, that strong reaction kind of reassured me that I was for sure mounting lots of antibodies. But my son, who also had COVID, Um, really had a sore arm for two days and he was fine. Literally did not skip a beat. And all of his friends around him have had the vaccine also and they're reporting the same thing. And when you look at the research, what we're seeing around the country is the children just are not getting the side effects, the flu-like side effects that the older people are getting. So uh, 
I know my daughter's old enough to get it. And she, of course, looks at Instagram. So these kids know, I mean, a lot of them are asking, I know she asked me, when do I get to get my vaccine? I've never had, I've never had someone uh, in my family, a child say, can I get my shot? Are you finding a lot of these kids want the shot because they want to be with their friends and get back to normal? I had a girl come in yesterday, um, a 16 year old, and she, her mother had a lot of questions about the shot. And she's going, mom, mom, let me get the shot. I need to see grandma again. You know, I need to see grandma. You know, the shot is safe. It's fine. So sometimes you have the parents that are hesitant and the children that are not. The children are very eager to get the shot. That's a new thing, right? The kid asking, begging for a yes. shot. <laughs> It is, but I think you're right. In fact, they see it also as a gateway back to normalcy and these kids need normalcy. Yes. So that's the other thing you're balancing. And I should share with our audience, you're a DO, a doctor of osteopathy. So you kind of, uh, same training of going through those, all the same med school, but you look at it as a, a little bit more holistic too. So, so, I mean, you opened that door, so I'm going to step into it. Um, the, it's funny to watch that because I graduated from medical school in 1991. And at the time I chose to become a DO because of the holistic approach that they had towards medicine and kind of like the body heals itself approach that they have. Well, as time has evolved, the allopathic or the MD field has also adopted that um, approach. We see it more and more, you know, don't give the medicines, let the body heal itself. Don't give antibiotics. Don't don't interfere. Don't interfere. If it's not broken, don't fix it. So we do see that more and more. But yes, that has been my philosophy. And yes, all my training was done through MD hospitals. I passed the MD board. So um, I because there's not there wasn't very many osteopathic training uh, residencies at the time. But yes, my approach has always been let the body heal itself and deal. And I bring that up because uh, perhaps some people who are vaccine hesitant and want to use more holistic options uh, are nervous about the vaccine for their kids and saying, well, my child's healthy, or maybe they already had COVID and they've already recovered. So I'm weighing risk versus benefit. And I just don't see yeah, so, um, what's I mean, your answer. Yeah. The, the kids that have, I think that even, even our research on the kids that have had COVID, they're definitely more safe than the kids that haven't had COVID. And I actually wrote to the CDC and I asked them, why are you saying get the vaccine after you've had COVID? Because we've always taught that having the natural immunity is stronger than getting an art, what we call an artificial immunity or vaccine induced immunity. And they did write back to me and I was very surprised that they did. And they said, because the response to the vaccine is much more predictable and it's stronger. Mm. So, Right, especially we've seen some of the kids have such mild cases or maybe not even know they had it except for a positive test because maybe mom or dad had a stronger case so you got the whole family tested and they're like oh well, they're positive but i don't see anything going on so that i was told that as well too even why do we need the vaccine i've already had covid mm-hmm. but that this is a predictable uh response and you're going to make better antibodies that's correct you're going to make have a, a more robust and predictable response. Whereas they feel that if your viral load was smaller when you actually had the disease, you know, say you didn't get that sick, you don't make as many antibodies is, is what the CDC uh, said to me. Okay. To so uh, um, right now, uh, just to let everyone know, you can go at most places. You don't even need an appointment at uh, these vaccine sites. Right. Should you just take your kids to the sites? Is it better to go to the pediatrician? Do you even have shots to give? Um, my advice is to go to the sites. So my nurse, my um, physician assistant yesterday was at the one of the sites yesterday. They vaccinated over a thousand people, and incidentally, about forty or fifty people came in with their over twelve year old and also get those. They did not have an appointment. But those child, those children got vaccinated yesterday. So and a lot of times you don't even need the appointment. It, it, it just go. Places. Correct. Uh, and that has shifted. I know but earlier in the podcast, I was telling people, be patient, be patient. Mm-hmm. But if you want to take your kids and you're going to some of these mass vaccination sites, say at the convention center in downtown Hartford, or uh, maybe out at Rensselaer Field, you know, looking, we have all that information right on our Channel 3 app where they go. Most of them now are just show up. Register if you want, but you could just show up. That's correct. In Torrington or in Litchfield, the county here, the Torrington Armory, pretty much every day except for Sunday has a vaccine clinic open. Okay. So that's something else you want to check out is that it may with kids and school and work, it might be busy during the week. So you might have a better shot of going on a Saturday than a Sunday. It is open on Saturday. Okay. Anything that the kids should prepare for? Um, Do you want to make sure they're well hydrated? I know when we were preparing for, we were all drinking our Gatorade and doing different things. So 
uh, I usually say maybe take an ibuprofen before you go, but you don't have to. Okay. You don't need to do anything special. Well, you bring up that thing. A lot of people were afraid to take anything um, because there was, especially with ibuprofen, because it was early mm -hmm. in the game, we were interviewing doctors that perhaps you might have this thing called a cytokine storm or Advil wouldn't be good for the vaccine. I know now they're telling us after I got my vaccine, they said, don't suffer. If you want to take some Advil, take it. Or you want to take Tylenol, take it. What do people need to know about taking something? Did I lose you there? Did I lose you there? Are, are you still there, doctor? I, I don't hear you anymore. Um, I think you might have. Can you talk again, doctor? Sorry. There you go. Okay. I hear technical you now. Difficulties. Okay. Tec we understand technical difficulties. You're still listening to the vaccine team podcast. And I'm here with Dr. Lucia Benzoni. We're talking about giving the kids the vaccine. So uh, now that we're all good. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, yeah. Earlier, I was saying earlier, we were told maybe don't take anything. I've still had friends at work saying, oh, I wasn't taking anything because I, I, I heard you shouldn't. Is that not the case. Uh, my nurse it's told me, anyway. take Advil, take Tylenol, take them both, do whatever you want, don't suffer. Yes. yes. That's basically it. We also said at the very beginning, don't use steroids. And now steroids are mainstay of treatment when someone does get COVID. Mm. So yes. A lot of things have changed there. And that's why you don't see the, the, um, the amount of deaths that we did at the beginning either. Our treatment has changed dramatically. At the very beginning of COVID, I'm actually board certified in both internal medicine and pediatrics. So at the very beginning, um, when this all started last uh, March, I actually left my office for two months and I worked in the hospital as patients came in with COVID. And I saw how we treated them at the beginning. And now when I go back, I occasionally I'll do a, a shift as a hospitalist at our local hospital. And um, it's changed and people just are not as sick as they were because we're treating them. We, our treatments have gotten just so much better, mm, mm. COVID, which has been very great. So in summary, you're saying get the vaccine. Now let's talk about the younger kids. I have an 11 year old son who hates to get shots. Like we'll cry about them for days. And he's already saying, why can't I lie about my age? I want to get this vaccine. Like it's actually become, I think the cool thing to get the vaccine. But I think the younger we get, the more parents are going to become concerned. So yes. what yes. are your thoughts about the younger kids? I think what we will do is we will watch the 12 year olds. We will wait, wait and see and make sure there's no unknown side effects that happen. And there are already studies going on as young as six months on up with both Moderna and Pfizer. So there's going to be a lot of data that come in from that before we um, authorize it for younger kids. With children, we take always more precautions. Is that the right way to say it? Than we do with adults because that we children don't make their own decisions. We make them for them. So it's important that we make them for them. We make them with an informed choice and with as much safety data as possible. And that's what we are doing in, with the COVID vaccine. Right, and you also think the kids are growing, their cells are dividing, everything is changing so often. I mean, a lot of parents even worry about just some, uh, we're having a whole anti-vax movement in Connecticut of mm -hmm. parents who don't even want to do regular childhood yes. vaccines. And, and remember, I always say this, those parents too think they're doing the best for their child because they yes. want to do the best for their child. Yeah. So uh, the, the, in summary, you do think it's safe. And you also said you're getting some information that you think the 12 and under set um, or rather under 12, we're going to see vaccines approved for them soon. I think we will see vaccines. I don't know about soon, but probably within two or three months. Okay. Um, so maybe by the time people go back to school. Yes. So that brings so a remember, question. Go on. Okay. So remember too, that when, when COVID gets the younger kids, we've had no deaths in Connecticut for children under 17, zero. So when COVID, you know, they can get the, the multi-system inflammatory, but syndrome, but even that we're not seeing a lot of that. There was so much hype about that at the very beginning, but we're right. not really seeing a lot of it. So it makes the drive or the push to vaccinate children, not as urgent as it would be for an adult. Yes. Are you seeing, have you treated some teens that have become very sick and that's why you are advocating for the vaccine or is it just an extra layer of, of protection? 
I actually haven't had any really sick, and I should probably knock on wood here, but my most of the kids, nobody's been hospitalized in my practice for over 2,500 kids. Mm-hmm. And, um, we've had lots and lots of positives. So we've had no hospitalizations, but I am advocating it for the protection of grandma, That like the girl who came in yesterday, you want to see grandma. Um, so protect grandma. And also the schools are not going to let these kids, you know, they want these kids vaccinated because you have teachers that are, are very fearful of getting COVID. And these kids want to go to prom. They want to, you know, they want to go to prom without a mask. Yes. Be able to go back to the cafeteria and sit with, you know, more than two kids separated by six feet. They want normal. Well, so let me ask you one more thing. That's about the masks, right? Uh, We just got the word that masks are no longer necessary to wear indoors from the CDC. And we're waiting um, to see how that's going to play out in businesses and in schools and all of that. So, and the question about masks, like if I'm totally vaccinated and so is my husband, do we, we don't need to wear the mask, but do the kids need to wear the mask? Right. So it's an interesting question because I think a lot of things go with that. How do you prove someone's been vaccinated? How do you know that somebody's not saying they're vaccinated because they just don't want to wear a mask? I mean, there's just so many things that go along with that. So I think one thing that will happen over time is that we will see the restrictions on younger children, especially lifted, who can't be vaccinated because the science has proven that these kids are not the super spreaders that they were first said that they were going to be. They just aren't. They don't have the receptor in their nose um the, the the ACE2 receptor, which is what the coronavirus protein spike protein attaches to, children do not have as many of those in their nose as adults do. So it makes them less likely to get it. Oh, is that why? That's the first time I've heard like, why is it that they don't get it as much or as bad? You know that it attaches to the ACE2 receptor and adults have a lot more ACE2 receptors in their nose. We just grow them more as we get older? Yes, like a lot of things. (laughs) Um, I I have had a five-month-old have COVID and in the practice and parents said to me, I would never have known. They only got tested because I was tested, you know, the parent was tested. So do you foresee kids having to wear masks when they go back to school if they're not vaccinated? Well, I'm going to answer it with a hope rather than a foresee. I certainly hope they don't have to wear masks, at least, you know, kindergarten through third grade. I certainly hope they don't have to wear masks because it's been really hard on the kids and really, really hard on the teachers and the school systems. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, now, I, the advice, if you do have families who have chosen not to vaccinate and they're not going to vaccinate their kids, Um, Does that change your advice for them about what they do this summer and wearing masks? I think if they're not going to vaccinate, they more for the adults than the kids, but the adults do need to be extra special carefully because with COVID, you don't know when it's going to strike or who it's going to strike. There's a lot of unpredictability with it. Even though our treatment has gotten better, there are still people that are totally healthy that do die from it. Mm. I think of myself being pretty healthy and I, I had a pretty nasty case of it, but uh, you know, two weeks of feeling sick is a lot better than ending up in the hospital. But, uh, and then the long haul symptoms. Are you also noticing just before I, I have so many questions, but I know we're going to be wrapping for time soon, but I am, I was reading that some of the long haul symptoms um, are starting to go away for people who get vaccinated. Is that just conjecture? Or have you noticed that? I, first of all, the- So the long haul systems, there's been a lot of talk about that even in pediatrics. And so they have a specific return to play now. If you do have COVID, there's a 14 day return to play that the kids have to, 14 days after they've been tested positive, they have to return to play. It's like a concussion. Yeah. Same thing, they have to slowly return to play because there's conjecture or a theory that they could have um, myocardiopathy, which is an enlargement of the heart and and a weakening of the heart from COVID itself. I have not experienced any of that. I've only read about it. Um, But I did also read, yes, that with the vaccine, we are not seeing the long haul or the long haul effect. I did read that also. I don't know the science behind that yet. And I think it's fairly new science. Okay, so perhaps getting the vaccine would mitigate any long haul effects. That is what the hope is. Okay. And again, we're still learning this, but um, Dr. Lucia Benzoni, we thank you for your information. And I hope that it's putting some parents' minds at ease or at least giving people information so that they can make sound decisions for their family. I think certainly a lot of these kids want to get back to normal. And it does seem that the way the state is moving, the way the country is moving in order to do that, you're going to need to be vaccinated. Yes, I think you're correct. We we need to get back to normal. 
And does, let me ask you, the other people are asking is if they get their kids vaccinated, does that mean they don't have to quarantine anymore? If they get their kids vaccinated, they don't have to quarantine anymore. That's how our okay. school system is set up. And that is what has been said. Yes. Okay. So if that's if nothing else, you don't want your kid to be in and out quarantining. Once you're double vaccinated, you are exempt from quarantine in Connecticut. Yes. Okay. Right. And it is only double vaccinated right now. Cause we're not allowed. They can't get the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. So, you know, which is a one shot. The Pfizer is the only one right now. <laughs> Dr. Benzoni, thank you so much for sharing some information and empowering parents out there. We appreciate you coming on the vaccine team podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.